Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch. Uh, we're back with another LibGDX tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be taking a look at text. Uh, in our last tutorial where we did our first application, uh, I said I was not going to do a traditional hello world because dealing with text in LibGDX is a little bit complicated. Uh, it's not actually difficult, but it is uh, a little bit complicated. So for a first example, it isn't really that great. Uh, but for a second example, it's absolutely perfect. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to cover how to load and then display texts on screen. Uh, what this involves is actually generating a font file. Um, in the world of games, there's basically two types of fonts. There's bitmap fonts, uh, which are basically just pictures of text. Uh, so when you say, hello, you're drawing the letter for H, the E, the L, the L, and O from graphics. Um, that is the most performant way. Uh, unfortunately, it has some downsides. Uh, the other option is something called true type font. Uh, That's what your operating system generally uses. Uh, I believe uh, both Mac, PC, and Linux all default to true type fonts for rendering now. Um, and essentially, a true type font is an algorithmic font. So it's saying, here's how you draw an A, and then it mathematically draws the character A. The nice thing about taking this approach is more like vector graphics kind of concept is you can scale it up or scale it down infinitely, and it stays equally crisp. Unfortunately, it's slow. So you've got the two approaches. One is to take the uh, font, uh, the bitmap font, and the other one is to take the text approach. Uh, the text approach is actually something we're not covering in this particular video, but you see here there's a library called FreeType. Uh, FreeType is uh, a TrueType font library renderer for libgdx, uh, but we're actually going to go ahead and use the bitmap font instead. Now in order to get a bitmap font, what we have to do is create one. Uh, the easiest way to do that is actually to load in one of your system's TTF files or two type font files and then create the bitmap graphic from it. There's a tool in libgdx called Hero uh, and we're going to go ahead and use it. Uh, I've got this screen up, the project creator, just to make sure that you see something important here. Hero is included in the tools extension. So if you're going to be using it, you need to include tools when you're doing your uh, project creation. I've actually already run this. I just wanted that up to see it. So when you create your project, make sure you select tools. So here's our generated project. The first thing I'm going to do is go in and create uh, the true type font we want. We'll ultimately be adding it to our assets folder here. But in order to do so, there's two um, there's two approaches you could do here. One is to run this from the terminal. It's a long, drawn-out Java command. I'm not going to bother going through that. Uh, if you go through the text tutorials from Game From Scratch, there's actually a description uh, in the very first one of how to run the command. So if you're more of a terminal person, go there. Um, otherwise, you can actually run it directly from your IDE. Depending on if you use IntelliJ or Eclipse, the process is a little bit different. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you in both. But we'll start with IntelliJ. And assuming that you've done and you've added the, uh, the module support for tools, go down to your external libraries down here in your project view, and then locate GDX tools. Expand that out, and then expand out combadlogic.gdx, expand out tools, and hero is the guy you want. Just expand that out, locate hero, and just right-click and run. Now, when you're setting up your project configuration, all you need to do is set the module to desktop. And now it'll run. And here's Hero. Now, what Hero does is, again, it loads TTF fonts and then turns them into a bitmap and a .fnt file for use in uh, libgdx. Uh, all you basically do is pick, your, uh, pick the font you want to use over here. Uh, let's use Razor's font. Here's what the results are going to actually. That's pretty hideous. Okay, we'll go with this font, Ravi. Um, you pick it. You can pick the different rendering effects you want when uh, generating. Uh, so, say we want to do a gradient on the font, like so. So, once you've got the font as you want it defined, all you do is go File and Save Font right here and we're going to save it into um, why is this a different no oh, Java different version okay save it into our project uh, once again it goes in the assets folder if you have an Android project it goes in the assets folder in your Android project if you do not it goes in the assets folder of your core project and then just come down here and uh, name it and we'll call it myfont.fnt and save now, if you go over to your assets folder, you should now see there's the 
font file you just created, which is just this very simple text description, and then an image file that goes with it. Okay, there's one very important thing I can point out right here, and a lot of people don't get this. True type fonts are copywritten. Like, they're not legal for you to use unless you have a license to do so. There are public domain fonts, but you can't just load up Hero, pick a system font, convert it to a bitmap and use it in your game. You are actually um, in copyright violation at that point. So if you, whatever TTF font you are going to convert, make sure you have a license for it or they can come back and get you because amazingly enough, fonts are copy protected and there is a lot of money in this industry. Uh, so someone might actually come after you if you use their font illegally. So something to be aware of, fonts are something that are licensed. There are free versions available. There are all kinds of sites that do uh, free licensed TTF files, but you can't just use the system ones like I just did um, and distribute them because beyond your own computer and personal use, you have no license for their usage. All right, so that's doing it in IntelliJ. Let's say if you're using Eclipse instead, the process is very similar, but all you do is you go in and do a run. Oh, stupid, I hate Eclipse. All right, run configurations. And then what we want to do is create a new one under Java application. We want desktop. All right. And then the kicker is, so once you've got your project selected, then you just come down and locate hero. So pick your project as desktop, pick your main class as hero in your run configuration for a Java application. And you could say, and then give this a, a name so it actually makes sense. Like so, apply and run. And that's how you run it from Eclipse. Uh, once again, there is an option to run it from the command line as well, uh, but it's easier, in my opinion, to run it from either ID. And then once it's run in both IDs, then you can just run it from the configuration. So if I want to run it again, just come up here and click and run. All right, so let's get back to code now. Um, working with fonts is actually quite simple. Uh, let's open up our main uh, project here. And we'll just, we're going to take the uh, the standard one, but Strip everything that we don't need, which is basically everything that isn't the sprite batch. But you're going to see there's a very nice consistency to the way libgdx does things. Now let's just get that down. Okay. So here's our project that basically does nothing. Let's get rid of that hideous red and instead go with black again. And now let's go about using our font. First thing we need to do is load our bitmap font, like so. Create one, and now load it. Okay, now the next thing is you need to pass it uh, the file handle. Uh, the easiest way to get that is things that are in the assets folder are available. Oops, just a sec. There. Uh, you can access them using gdx.files.internal. Internal will be the root of anything that's in your assets folder. And then you just pass in the file name, uh, my font.fnt, like so. Uh, next thing we're going to need is some text to write. All right, and then over here we'll, we'll oops, ah. And a little belated, we'll do our actual hello world, like so. And then all you do to actually render the string using the font, it's a little counterintuitive because you actually use the font to draw the string, not the string to draw in a font. Uh, but you just go font dot draw. And once again, there's all kinds of options available. But the first one, we're just going to go with the simple basic draw call. You pass in the batch. You pass in the string. And then... We'll, we'll start with centered, but I'm, I'm going to show you something with doing this. All right, so this should sort of uh, draw the font center to the middle of the screen. It's not actually going to, uh, but it's going to be close. So let's go ahead and run. Oops. All right, I'm about to run hero. Ah, uh, yeah, that was a mistake. All right, let's create a new run configuration. Uh, for application, set the module to desktop, set the assets folder to cores assets, 
set the main to the desktop launcher. There you go. All right. You'll get used to doing that in your sleep. So go ahead and run it. And we will see. All right. So there we are, centered once again to the screen, not to our text. So that's as, that's as simple as it is to draw text. It's really quite simple. You take your font and you draw it to the batch. Now, what, however, what you might want to do is actually position it relative to the string. Now, we did this in the past by taking our bitmap, in, uh, sorry, our, uh, our sprites dimensions and subtracting them out. Unfortunately, we can't pull that same trick here because we're dynamically creating a font. However, there is a relatively simple way to get around this. Let's uh, add a new guy here, and it's, um, uh, let me try to remember the name, bitmap font dot text bounds. Okay, so, so essentially what we want to do is measure our string, and it's just a matter of bounds equals my text dot bounds um, dot get Oh, sorry, I'm being an idiot here. Font dot get bounds, and then you pass in your string. So essentially, what this class here is, doing, or what uh, what font here is doing, is, is it's giving you the dimensions that the rendered string will be by that font. Um, so you pass in the text you're going to turn in. It figures out how big it's going to be when you're done and returns it as a bounds object. So now that we have our bounds object, all we're going to do is we come back here and let's make this multi-line so that it's a little bit cleaner. Okay, now let me just kick into presentation mode so you can see a bit better too. All right, so here's our resulting code right now, and we're going to get the dimensions of our uh, our string here. And now all we want to do is half of the width gone, and since we're bottom left oriented, half the height up, like so. Now we go ahead and run. Boom, center text. So that's how you do with text in libgdx. Um, and the next thing you might want to do is actually uh, a multi-line text. So in this case, you know, we're, we're dealing with just the single line. It's easy to deal with. What happens if your string is a little bit more complicated? So let's go and change our string up here to something that's multi-line. All right, so now we have this multi-line string. It's just there, aesthetically better. Now, how do we draw this? Well, obviously, this isn't going to work because um, this is actually set for a single uh, line. But the the things are actually pretty predictable into what you change it to. Just go to get multi-line bounds, and then for your draw call, you go to predictably enough draw multi-line, and let's go ahead and run our application, and I made a mistake, okay, uh, one second, ah, that was stupid, let me just go ahead and actually add new lines to my string so it's actually multi-line, and now we'll run it, there you go. So as you see, multi-line text is quite simple. Uh, one final thing that we're going to look at is you can actually set the justification and the color of the font. Now, we, we did um, gradient rendering when we created this, so the results might be a little awkward, but let's go ahead and uh, change out to it uh, so it's justified center, and we'll change it so that it's a different color. Uh, the, like I said, the color result might come out a little bit different, uh, unfortunately, but let's go ahead. So first off, uh, the multi-line is just a matter of calling it different um, centered, sorry. It's just a matter of calling a different set of uh, uh, parameters into draw multi-line. And what we're going to do is this one changes we'll call it, we'll make it um, the far left side of the screen. This will make sense in a second. We still want to do it centered to the vertically centered. 
So those are your X and Y values. You're, so you're still passing in your batch, your text you want to render. Uh, your first coordinate is zero, which is bottom left of the screen. Again, we'll get to that in a minute. And then your Y coordinate is going to be the middle of the screen vertically. Um, next up, you pass in the dimensions of your string. So this is the amount, this is the thing that the string is going to center itself relative to. Uh, so in this case, we're going to pass in the width. This is why I passed in zero before, because it will be centering itself relative to the entire screen anyways. Um, and then finally, we pass in that. And what we're saying here is that we want our, uh, our font to be uh, drawn, justified centered. And let's go ahead and well, we'll just run that now. So same thing, just in this case, centered as opposed to left justified. You can also, obviously you can do right justify, left justify, and centered here. Uh, finally, setting the color of your font is trivial. Let's go in and go set color. And we'll use one of the built-ins. Uh, let's go with purple. Everybody likes purple. There we go. And we'll run that. And as you can see, so as we started with a gradient color, the end result is going to be a little bit different. If we used a solid color, um, changing the color up here would have a much more profound effect. Let's do one that's a little bit easier to see. See, it's actually not easier to see at all. Um, if you use a base color not with any text effects, changing the color does have a much more profound effect on it, or a much more uh, appreciable effect on it. Uh, so that's basically it. When you're working in uh, LibGDX text, make sure you use the tools so you can get access to Hero. Uh, use Hero to convert your TrueType font into a bitmap font. Or if you want to use uh, TrueType fonts instead, you use the somewhat slower but graphic, graphically prettier uh, free type library. We'll, we might cover that somewhere down the road. Because um, again, one of the big things here is true type fonts. And I can illustrate it quite simple here. Font dot set scale. All right. Let's, let's scale this font up to three times its normal size. And run. See, that's what happens. Um, as you scale a true type font, it stays nice and crisp, nice clean edges. As you scale a bitmap font, it gets pixelated and ugly. Uh, some games are actually looking for this effect, like, you know, the classic 8-bit, 16-bit kind of art style. Uh, other times it's not so great. And where you kind of run into a problem here where true type fonts may not be, sort of true, true type fonts might be the best choice for you, is if you're dealing with multi-resolution situ situations like, uh, for example, on desktop, when you're trying to, to deal with as best as you can, or on um, iOS, where you're dealing with uh, retina versus non-retina devices, in those cases, it might actually be worth the performance hit to use a true type font. Um, if you're just debugging text out to screen, whatever, uh, by all means, stick with bitmap fonts. Uh, so, summary, bitmap fonts fast and kind of ugly when scaled, but you've got more options for uh, the effects you can do when running in Hero. Uh, true type fonts, slower. Uh, prettier, less options. Uh, which one you decide to use, completely up to you. Again, you load them into Hero to create them. And the most important thing I can summarize at the end is you need to license true type fonts. So be careful. You can't just pick anything and use it and ship it with your game. You can do it like I've done here for my personal use. I might be a little iffy for making a video of this actually. Uh, but for distributing your actual game, uh, you cannot use those fonts. So, for example, if you are actually displaying uh, debug information on a local build only, you're probably actually legally fine. Uh, but for a commercial game you're releasing, no. You uh, cannot distribute fonts, and there is actually people out there that look for illegal font usage and sue as a result. So this is not something to take lightly. Use licensed fonts only. Again, there's a thousand free ones available on the Internet. It's not so hard to... And a number of them, I actually believe, are open source, so you shouldn't have a problem anyways. Uh, so that's dealing with fonts in LibGDX. I hope that was useful. Thanks very much.